Hey there, Fragrance Fam! It's Caitlin here, and welcome back to the AFI Project Lab. We've been making a ton of candles here lately. We've been gearing up for the cold months and tons of holiday fun. Today, I'll be switching things up from our old regular container candles to make some shaped pillar candles. So like this video and keep watching to find out how to make Fraser fir pillar candles with our fragrance oils. Recently, uniquely shaped pillar candles have become really popular, so it's not hard to find a mold made specifically for candles in the shape that you want. That being said, you can also make pillar candles pretty easily using any other mold types, like these silicone cavity molds. They're shaped like little trees, which will make them perfect for our version of Time's Fraser Fir fragrance oil that I'll be using today. I've chosen them because they're about an inch thick and not too tall, which is substantial enough for a good burn pool. Any thinner and your candles might not have an ideal burn. Because they don't have any space for wicks, I'll be showing you how to make a pillar candle from molds like this using just a toothpick. But first, let's make our wax trays. When working with pillar wax, I recommend using a double boiler. It can take a while to melt and leaving your melting container in the microwave for a long time can cause it to get super hot and make your pouring experience rather unpleasant. But be sure to follow the instructions for your specific wax type and melting method. I've got my wax here and a double boiler and I'm gonna stir it gently as it melts down. So once the wax is completely liquid, we're gonna give it a quick temperature check. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's the right temperature to add fragrance. In my case, that's about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the standard additive temperature for most wax types. Before I remove it, I'm going to add my candle dye. You can use dye chips or liquid candle dye. In my case, I'll be using a dye block from the flaming candle in a nice green color. Remember, trees come in all kinds of shades of green, so don't be afraid to experiment with different hues. So once the wax is completely liquid, we're gonna give it a quick temperature check. Let your candle dye melt into the rest of your wax and now we can remove it from our heat source. Add in your fragrance at the desired usage rate and stir thoroughly for at least a minute to make sure it's really blended. Our wax is just about ready to be poured now, so I'm going to give it one last temperature check before I fill my molds. You'll want to know the recommended pouring temperature of your wax. In my case, it's around 180 degrees. Oh, and just make sure that your molds of choice are able to withstand high heat. Most silicone molds are fine to be used with hot wax, but it doesn't hurt to check the manufacturer beforehand. Now we're going to fill up each mold cavity to the top. All right, so now I'm going to allow my little trees to cool and solidify. This can take a few hours, so be patient to make sure that they fully harden before trying to remove them. If the surface is solid, but they still feel warm, make sure to leave them in for a little bit longer. I'll check back once they're ready. Okay, so they've completely cooled and hardened. So to get them out, we're gonna gently flex the silicone mold and release the tiny trees. and they're so cute. Depending on the wax and additive to use, you may experience some modeling like I have. Modeling is perfectly normal in paraffin waxes and can be avoided using additives, but I really like the look that it gives my candles, especially winter themed ones. It kind of looks like the candles are frosted with ice. Now we're gonna lay them out and grab a toothpick or a thin skewer. Just make sure that whatever tool that you use is around the same size or smaller than your wicks. The next step is a little bit tricky, so I recommend making extra trees to practice on. Now we're going to use a toothpick to mark the center of both the bottom and top of the wax trees. Do your best to line these up perfectly. There's a little room for error, but the pillars will burn better if the wick is centered up nicely. All right, with both of our little guide marks made, slowly poke the toothpick through. Alternate between both the holes, going bit by bit to make sure that it doesn't veer off center. I've tried this by just poking straight through the top or bottom, but it's really easy to poke out the side of the candle doing this. So just be patient and go bit by bit until you've made a hole for the wick to go all the way through the center. Okay, so I've given all of my little trees a hole for some wicks, so now we can go ahead and thread them through the bottom. I'm using a pre-tabbed 6-inch CD8 wick, which I find works well in smaller paraffin pillar candles. Thank you. 
And there you go. The little trees stand up perfectly with the wicks threaded through them. And with a quick little trim to a fourth of an inch, your Fraser fir candles are done. You can stop here if you'd like, but I'm going to give my trees one last finishing touch. Using a silvery white mica powder, I'm going to dust the trees with a paintbrush to really sell the frosted look. I don't usually recommend using mica powders in your candles because of their propensity for clogging wicks, but in small decorative pillar candles like this, it's not gonna hurt one bit. And there you go. This is a pretty easy way to make pillar candles using just about any mold. Now, this doesn't work with every mold shape and the results can vary depending on how wide and tall your molds are. So I recommend performing lots of burn tests with different mold shapes, wax types and wicks. In my case, I managed to get a pretty good burn. As with any shape pillar candle, be sure to burn them in a safe area away from any flammable with plenty of supervision. Because these aren't the standard cylindrical pillar shape, you'll want to make sure that you and your customers burn these on a surface that can catch the wax, like a little heat safe dish. Here's what they look like burning. The flame is like a little star on the top of the tree. It's so cute. I think these candles would look adorable on the mantle or as part of a Christmas dinner centerpiece. To price them, here are some guidelines. Factor in the price of your wax, fragrance, and other raw materials that you use. You'll also want to keep the cost of supplies in mind. Each one of my little trees weighs about 1.8 ounces, costing me about $3 to make. So I'd sell them wholesale $5 to $6 and retail $8 to $10. Remember, these price points will change based on your own supplies. Oh, and don't forget to factor in your own cost of labor. And there you go. You got your whole forest of Fraser fir candles. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for tons more candles ideas like this one. We've got a lot of new projects coming your way. So if you ring that bell icon, you'll never miss an update from AFI. As always, I'm Caitlin and I'll see you back in the lab real soon. Bye for now.